kale. It is in Lightman Garden, August 12, 2023. Been away for a few weeks because it's been hotter than hell in our area. July was a record setter for us. You know, 31 consecutive days above 110. And the thing that really did in my yard, and I'm sure yours as well to some degree, was the 17 or so days where it was actually above 115. Nighttime temperatures, you know, around 90. 10 o'clock p.m. at night, and it's like, you know, still well over 100 degrees. So the plants just got hit really hard last month. No relief, could not cool down at night. And because I don't have shade canopy for all my plants, they inevitably got some leaf scorch. They got burnt up. So what I really learned as a lesson with what happened last month is that I need more shade in my yard. Watering can only do so much, right? No matter how much water you're putting down, it's losing that to transpiration. And eventually you're gonna get sun scald um, if these plants are in direct sun. So what I have done as a permanent solution is put up shade cloth. This is a 10 by 10 structure. I've got this over my mangoes. So we've got 100 square feet of coverage here. Being 100 square feet, all of the lateral pipes are gonna be 10 foot length, so I have eight of those, four on the bottom, four on the top, and then my vertical post is six and a half feet tall. All this pipe is from one inch EMT conduit so I chose one inch just because this is going to be a permanent uh, structure. I'm going to utilize this not only in summer to shade these mangoes, but also in the winter to frost protect them and use this as a cold frame and clamp on frost cloth. So I went with one inch. It's a little bit more expensive, of course, than the three quarter inch, but definitely heavier and I think will last longer. So I really liked having the bottom rung um, again because I'm going to use this as a cold frame so I can clamp on, you know, frost cloth to that bottom rung and avoid air gaps. But another thing, as you can see, I've secured the structure to the ground with these J rebar hooks. So that's what prevents this from flying away on me. As far as the connectors, you can see I've got a flat roof corner on every corner of the structure. So eight in total for the shade structure. pipe simply slips into those sleeves and then you use those eye bolts to tighten it down. So pretty easy install. This also makes it easy to disassemble if you want the shade structure to be temporary. Now as far as the shade material here, I opted for a 70% shade cloth density. That's going to provide a little bit more temperature relief for these mangoes. I wanted something fairly dense. Um, even 40 to 60% shade cloth is going to drop the temperature anywhere between like 13 and 20 degrees. Since putting these mangoes into the structure, they have been able to put on new growth, so it doesn't hamper them in that way. And the new growth does not get zapped by the sun, which it would otherwise have happened. You can see some leaf burn to this plant, and this was because Prior to putting this structure up, I had this plant in morning sun, and even morning direct sun was enough to sun scald this Kyo Savoy mango that's in a container. Since putting it in here, you can see again that foliage looks pristine. So the mangoes are definitely liking this density of shade cloth. I've seen people even on the Mango growing groups use a 90% density. That's still gonna allow some light penetration. So as far as clamping the shade cloth on, I bought a 12 by 12 panel from Amazon. It had the grommets already put in. So you can see one side, I've got use of the bungees going through the grommets to secure it to the, the top rail. On this side, you can see I'm also using the bungee to tie it to the vertical post. The other way I'm securing the shade cloth is using these clamps. So agricultural supply stores have these. I'll link the products to everything I'm talking about. So I think these came from Greenhouse Megastore. 
Um, they're just one inch style, they're UV resistant, and they really tightly secure your cloth, whether you're using shade cloth or frost cloth, to your frame without it tearing. If you use metal clamps with jaws, they'll tend to tear the material, which is not good if you're wanting to use it long term. So these are a really nice option. So you can see up on this side, I'm using them every, I would say, 16 inches going down the line. And then just to mention, of course, for these vertical posts, since they're only six and a half feet tall, I did use a pipe cutter in order to cut to that length. Well, you could use a reciprocating saw if you're dealing with a lot of volume. Since I was just cutting four pipes, really didn't need uh, anything more than the pipe cutter made the job pretty fast. All of my mangoes have fared pretty well because none of them faced afternoon sun. There are a few burnt leaves from that morning sun from last month, but this will be my long-term plan for growing both container and in-ground mangoes during the summer is to, you know, put the shade up and give them that relief. Clearly the mangoes love the heat. It's that direct sun damages their foliage. So we'll take a look at another shade structure I put up. I have a number of hybrid tea roses. I saw them suffering a lot. Um, tons of leaf scorch. They were looking really sad. So just like with the mangoes, I decided to go ahead and invest in a permanent shade solution for these guys. So I did something very similar to what I just showed you, but this is adapted for this location off the wall. So in this case, I used three quarter EMT conduit, so saved a little bit of money there. Still used the flat corner roof connectors on both the top and bottom rungs. And I did spray paint um, all of these just to add to the longevity because EMT conduit will you know, rust over time. So I was trying to help prevent that by painting this and also to just make it look a little nicer so I used a Fusion 5 spray paint on this. This is a jungle green color gloss. The shig cloth on this is 60%. Similarly, these have 10 foot runs on the sides. I believe they're four and a half on the width and the height is five and a half feet. And that's so that it does not come up above the wall here. Do you live in an HOA, I have to make sure I follow their rules on things like that. So this is only visible from my yard. On the shade cloth, I just got a hundred foot roll by six feet. So it made it really easy just laying that out in one whole piece and then just clamping it. These clamps are same kind of idea. You just slip them over the pipe. These ones I got from Bootstrap Farmer. I think also Amazon carries them. I will link the product though. So I just wanna show you a little experiment here on how effective shade cloth is. This thermometer is reading in under the shade cloth on the leaf of this rose, you know, around 91 degrees. Let's pop over to my Mr. Lincoln that is in full sun. So in full sun, that reading is around 113 degrees. So a huge difference. Right, let's take a look at a sun damaged plant. This is my Kahala Longan. It's been in ground for seven years. You can see it looks really rough right now. It's facing the south, gets sun exposure all year, generally has no issue. This year was different. As you can see, a lot of burn around the leaves. Up top, especially where it has no shade. Down here at the bottom, the leaves look much nicer. The fruit looks much nicer. Um, it's not scalded. So even though this is generally fine, again, those back-to-back -back temperatures with that full-on sun, it just could not keep up with the transpiration. Certainly gave it plenty of water. The first foot of soil was plenty moist all the time, but this happened. Just wanted to show you another example of damage. This is my Asian pear. Look what happened to the, uh, the fruit this year. The fruit that's exposed out in the sun just completely scalded, turned black. So most of the fruit on this tree is ruined. 
it's sunburned. So not every tree was affected. Figs, you know, look untouched. Um, all your Mediterranean plants had no issue. Citrus, for the most part, was fine. Guava was fine. Moringa is fine. But there were a number of plants that did get sun scald to some degree. Or if they were carrying fruit, the fruit too burnt. What I'm experimenting with um, as a result of all this is kaolin clay. I'm not the first to talk about it. I've seen other gardeners discuss its benefits. It's something that they use in agriculture to protect plants from sunburn as well as from insects. So I'll show you what this looks like. It comes in a bag. Um, I purchased it from Arbico Organics, a 25 pound bag, but it's a uh, powder clay essentially of minerals and you just mix it with water, put it in a sprayer, mix it up and spray it on the foliage of your plants. So for those larger trees that you can't shade protect, you know, with a structure like this, uh, this is a nice alternative because this product will stay on as long as it doesn't get wet. And at least in the West Valley, I haven't seen one drop of rain this product has stayed on since application. I didn't have to put any kind of surfactant on it. It already has that in the solution, so it sticks to the leaves. But you're looking at my day avocado. This is in pretty good sun all day. Just And if there's one plant that really suffers from sunburn in full-on Arizona sun, it's avocado. So instead of putting up shade cloth for this guy, I just used the kaolin spray um, to protect the leaves. And what that will do is reduce the surface temperature on those leaves by 10 to 15 degrees. So it really does act like shade cloth for the plant. You can see I've done a similar thing to the jabotacaba. Not only protects the leaves, but also the branches from getting burnt. It's totally organic and safe. So not a problem to, you know, spray your fruit trees with this. I'm in my garage now. This is where I store all my garden amendments. Uh, taking a look at the bag of that kaolin clay. It's actually called Surround WP. It's the official name of it. Nova Source. And really what it looks like on the inside to me is like flour and it's that kind of consistency. So to use this on mixing ratio, if you have a one gallon sprayer, just go ahead and put some water into it, maybe like a third of it, fill that up, and then use half a cup of this powder, throw it into your sprayer and then top it off and then mix it up and you are good to spray. So very simple application. So given that, you know, I can do several trees with half a cup a 25 pound bag is going to last a very long time. While consistent irrigation is vital in summer, so is shade. And that's really the, the big lesson I learned this year. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.